This is My Taste is Better Than Yours, the manga podcast where Guardian Enzel and I, Samu, discuss some of our favourite series and figure out, is my taste better than yours? Hello again, everybody. It's your old pal, Guardian Enzo, along with my uh, my colleague, Samu, and we're here to uh, broadcast another episode of uh, My Taste is Better Than Yours. And this time around, it's one of my uh, favorite topics, uh, which is the next big thing. Uh, so there's some history here uh, I want to get into a little bit first. Uh, those of you who are uh, graybeards will know that Samu and I have done many podcasts together over at the Random Curiosity in, in the, the distant past, uh, starting with one, you know, a good many years ago where both of us picked this new series called Boku no Hero Academia uh, that we both thought was going to be really big. And we were both like, yeah, wow, this, this is going to be, this one is going to be huge. This series has it. Um, and more recently, you know, a personal favorite of mine, uh, another Boku, Boku, Boku Yaba, uh, Boku no Kokoro no Yabayatsu, The Dangers in My Heart. I, that's not a kaiju series big, but it's, it's pretty big. It's, it's gotten pretty big. And that's one I've been singing the praises of. So this idea of being able to you know, pick series that are not necessarily on everybody's radar, but w- which we think are going to go nuclear is one that I find rather interesting. And, and because it requires uh, looking at a lot of different factors like manga sales and even things like doujin sales, doujinshi, uh, what's trending in the doujin world, social media, uh, just buzz. And a lot of times it comes down to intuition too. Uh, and the last time, Samu and I had this conversation. There were really two series that I think we were both in agreement were it was impossible really to pick anything else. It was Spy Family and Chainsaw Man. Those 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 were going to be the, the, the next two big things that had not received anime yet. Uh, the only real question at the time was which of them was going to be bigger between the two. And I, I remember at the time I was like, you know, I, I, my instinct, my head is telling me it's got to be Chainsaw Man, but I wonder if it might be Spy Family uh, and gave a few reasons. And I think you could maybe even make an argument that Spy Family has, has beaten out Chainsaw Man as, as, as a kaiju. Uh, but in any case, there was never any question which one it was going to be. Um, it was going to be those two. And then I think the next one that everyone could see was going to be really big was um Oshinoko. Um I think everyone knew that was going to be really huge and I it did has turned out to be really big. Then we have series like Blue Lock that neither Summer or I would have picked to be the monster hit that it turned out to be. Uh, Blue Lock, I believe if I'm not mistaken was the best-selling franchise in terms of manga volume sold in 2023. Uh which is pretty stunning really. Uh, and then something like uh, Free Ren, Sosuno Free Ren, Free Ren at the Funeral. Um, I don't think either one of us, I think we both knew that was going to be successful. I don't think either one of us would have predicted it was going to be the monster hit that it's going to be. Um, so it's an, interesting, it's an interesting area to delve into. Uh, it's fun. It tests our instincts. It tests our knowledge. Uh, it tests our judgment, uh, and it's something we can look back on a year from now, two years from now, and say, "Wow, isn't that interesting?" You know, I, you know, you nailed that, you nailed that, or boy, were we off base. So, I only rules that we set up for this were it, it, we're each going to choose two series without telling the other person. Um, so, if we choose the same one, great. If we choose different ones, that's fine. Uh, and they can't have an anime yet. It can have an anime announcement, okay, but not. It cannot have previewed as an anime at the time uh, we're making this recording. Um, and I will stress at the time we're making this recording. Um, so uh, that's the main rule. Uh, each of us will take a turn. The other one will will maybe weigh in on it and agree or rebut, offer their own thoughts on it. Uh, so before we get into the specifics of it, and then we have a little bonus session on the end, uh, kind of fresh from today's headlines too, but we'll, we'll get to that at the end. But before we get into the specifics of it, Samu, do you have any general thoughts on this exercise of uh, next big thing before we get into the specifics of what we think they might be? 
Yeah, I think you've touched on my thoughts going in. I think it's harder now to predict what will be the next big thing for definite. We don't have a clear standout um, upcoming. If we're especially considering, as you say, manga titles that don't yet have adaptations in the works or announced, uh, if we're limiting it just to that, then we do kind of have to like look into a crystal ball and imagine how these scenarios are going to play out. And yeah, I'm sure there are going to be some that, on reflection, we might be like, oh, God, why wouldn't we pick that? I think, you know, Blue Lock is maybe something we wouldn't have picked because it's just not something that really appeals to either of us as much. And yeah. maybe that is worth noting. I would say between ourselves, perhaps our taste doesn't align 100% with what becomes quote-unquote popular. So this is just um, our feelings on that, I suppose. Okay. Uh, and again, just to clarify... It's okay to pick one that has an anime announcement, just not one that has a literal anime at the point we're recording this. So on that point, I'll go first, since since I was the one who kind of instigated this discussion. And I was just going to say, I'm very curious to get your opinion on this before I jump in, because at the time we're recording this, it does not have an anime yet. Would you have considered uh, Kaiju Number 8 to be a valid choice? Because it has an anime that's premiering in... April of this year. So would you have considered Kaiju number eight to be a valid? Uh, that isn't one that I've considered, I think, because I kind of just disqualified it because I think it's so close okay. to it coming out. But that okay. is worth knowing that is one that is extremely yeah. popular already. Yeah, and, and uh, that would have been one of my choices, just for the record, because it does not have an anime at the time we're sitting here having this conversation. And it, it to me, it has a chance to be uh, really big. I don't think it's going to be the next big thing as in Jujutsu Kaisen big or even um, Spy Family big but I do think it's it's going to be a big it's going to be a big hit um, okay so I have two uh, and my first one uh, now to just qualify the statement it has uh, a leak uh, in the sense that the domain name has been registered so that's about as nebulous a leak uh of an anime as you can imagine but it is still a pretty close to infallible leading indicator that it's going to get an anime and that is um kindergarten wars uh yochian wars uh by an author named chiba yo who has written two series her first uh, f- mm. Chiba Yo, I'm assuming it's a she, probably a she. Uh, she did write a series called Dry Cam or Dreet Cam, uh, which ran for, uh, you know, I think several volumes. I think uh, almost uh, probably close to 100 chapters. And it was about drifting. Uh, you know, if motorheads, petrol heads will know uh, drifting. And, and so pretty well received, but didn't, you know, didn't, didn't become any kind of a monster hit or anything. Yoshin Wars. Um, maybe Kaiju number eight among all the series that do not have premiered anime yet, that may be the one that has the, uh, the highest manga sales among current series or pretty close. Yochin Wars does not have sales on that level, but it sells quite well. Yochin Wars does. It's currently on its working on its eighth volume premiered in 2022, uh, Shonen Jump Plus. Um, which has been a good source for big hits, by the way, and that's part of this calculus too. Shonen Jump Plus has generated some pretty big hits. A uh, lot of buzz on this series. I've only just briefly scanned it, and it's not necessary that we read these things to, in order to predict that they're their bigness. Uh, we, you can have read them, you can have not read them. I had not read Spy Family, well, a little bit of Spy Family and none of Chainsaw Man at the time we had that conversation, but I knew from the other factors. And that's how I feel with kindergarten wars In all the places I look for, for hints that this thing is resonating with people. Uh, I think kindergarten wars is resonating with people. Uh, Yochin wars is the Japanese name. It's a very little tr- literal uh, localization. Um, and I think it has a chance to tap into some of the same vein of popularity that spy family has. Uh, in that it has a cuteness factor and a lot of comedy, but it also gets kind of dark 
and conflicted and edgy. Uh, and so a series that can cross demographic borders. Now, of course, this is a shonen, uh, so a spy family, but a series that can cross demographic borders in terms of finding an audience is one that has tremendous commercial potential. And I see that in Yoshian Wars. So that's my first pick uh, for a series that uh, may be my less obvious pick, but that's my first pick for a series that could potentially break through and be really big, Yochin Wars. So before we get to your first choice or your second choice, as it were, Samu, let's have you weigh in on my pick of uh, Yochin Wars. What are your thoughts on that as a prospect? Okay, this is really funny to me because before we started recording, I said... I have three picks that I want to highlight, but now that we've narrowed it down to two, I'm going to like slip in the third one in some ways, an honorable mention. And I suppose this is my way to do that because Kindergarten Wars would have been my third choice if we did that. And That's I mean, awesome. you pretty much nailed nailed it for me. And I, I come at it from a similar place as well. I've not read enough of it to give any real take on the quality of the story or like narrative decisions. But I do know that people who do read it really love it. And I also see a future for it and how it can appeal to a more broader demographic, like you say, similar to a spy to Spy X family. Yeah. It being Jump Plus as well, is I, I think it ticks a lot of like pre anime boxes of potential hits, uh just even looking at it from an outsider perspective. And I would say definitely this one is more this is definitely more of like if we're, if we're comparing it to our earlier conversation, this would have been definitely more of a Spikes family approach as opposed to the Chainsaw Man approach. They're very different series and popular, I would say, for different reasons and who they appeal to. Whereas I would say my two predictions are definitely more in the Chainsaw Man vein. Um, but yeah, it's funny that this was one that I did have in my mind as well. Okay, that's good to hear. In kind of a great, great minds think alike uh, kind of way. Um, yeah, there's there's something about this. If you know where to look for the boxes, it checks them. Um, okay, let's have you give us your first choice, if you would, please, Samu. Okay, my second place pick then is going to be, is a series that I do read, uh, Gachiakta by Kei Urana. And this is a weekly shonen magazine title, which currently has nine volumes. And it is what I see as like a new, a potential new Battle Shonen breakout. If we're comparing that magazine specifically, uh, the last one that we've got from them is Fire Force, which I would say is anywhere between fairly to very popular. I don't think it is necessarily the next big thing, but it definitely appeals to anyone who enjoys Battle Shonen. Um, I would say though, Gachakata is a lot better than Fire Force, I think, in terms of quality. I think the main thing that it has going for it is, thanks to Keirana's um, artworks, I know she, I was familiar with her beforehand on Twitter for the longest time on just the artwork she would post. But when she began serialization as a actual mangaka, that in itself was quite enticing to see how her art was going to translate as a manga. And, it is it's just stellar it's extremely stylish paneling and character designs and every chapter is really easy to read and also like so enjoyable to see how she interacts with comedy and like all these character designs that she plays around with at the core of it, i think it is a pretty good premise as well i say this as a battle shonen lover sometimes they get um, critiques of just being maybe a bit too plain or not much depth to them. I'm not saying Gachiakta is the deepest thing to ever come out, but I think there is something at play here with the idea of the upper and the lower class and using that in this like sci fi dystopian environment. Each of the arcs that we've had as well have been. I mean, they've been there've been ups and downs, but the downs have never been to a point where I've considered um, the series to be in a bad place. I think there is also a pretty good stopping point for the first season if it does get to course. P- projecting ahead, I can I can envision a future where this gets a lot of fans. You know, Gachi Akuda is one I like a lot too, uh, and I remember thinking 
I started reading it from the first chapter and I think we were even talking about it even when the first couple chapters were out we were saying this there's something something going on here this series has has something to it uh, and I remember I might have even said to you if this were running in in weekly shonen jump I think it would already be huge um and it's not to knock against shonen sunday or weekly shonen or any of the other competitor magazines which I think you know are are they all are capable of producing big hits but uh, I do think it's harder for a series that runs in, you know, something like, you know, weekly, weekly, weekly shonen, like as Gachi Akuda does, it's harder for those series to kind of thread the needle and become uh, real kaiju than a Shueisha series that runs in Jump or Jump Plus or one of those. So if it does, I'm definitely rooting for it. I like it a lot. I read it too. I think it's, the artwork is great. I kind of agree with your take on it that it's not um, super deep, but deep enough and thoughtful and intelligent enough. And uh, I really like it. I think it's a good pick. Uh, okay, let's move to my number two. Um, and I'm going to make a confession here. Um, is I, I did think about a different series in this spot, but um, the, the two, two reasons I didn't pick it. One, I know it's a series that's, very very dear to you and i didn't want to steal your thunder by by choosing it so i know i'm kind of violating our own rules here but i did kind of avoid picking it for that reason um and i'm gonna let you pick it and if you don't pick it i'll be very surprised and then the other thing is i'm kind of of the feeling that i think it's going to be very big i don't think it's going to be like uh spy family chainsaw man big personally in my opinion i think it's just going to be i think it's a really safe pick to be a big, big series. I, I'm not convinced it's going to be a true kaiju. So I'm going to go kind of out of left field on this one and pick a series called Tokyo Aliens um, by Naoe. Uh, and I will point out that of the three series we've picked so far, all of them are written by female mangaka. Um, and this one, uh, this one is, um, it's not even in Weekly Shonen or Shonen Sunday or much less Shonen Jump. It's in G Fantasy, which is a Square Enix imprint. Um, and it's also like Kindergarten Wars. It's on eight volumes. But I've seen some very, um, very interesting trends with the sales on this. Um, and I, I there's something I've seen with Kindergarten Wars is more of the uh of the slow steady building buzz building sales building building slowly consistently Tokyo Aliens is more of an explosive kind of a fandom I've seen spikes with this and I've looked through it and it it looks more conventional than it is let's put it that way it's a it, it's 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 very sci-fi driven it's about uh you know a high school kid awkward high school kid terrible grades loves manga very very you know very kind of a typical shonen lead um but and then gets into the whole thing with people with mysterious powers and being thrust into this whole world that's very different than the world he's used to uh so it is conventional but it has something else to it too there's a spark to it i wouldn't say it's a great series in my opinion, but I, I want to qualify that by saying I haven't read too much of it, but I just feel like this is a sort of series that's kind of like, um, this is a sort of series that a lit match could really, could, could really, something could blow up here. So it, this one is kind of the, the, as we say in sports terms, we'll be looking at a young prospect. I, I think the floor may be low, but the ceiling on this one is pretty high. And that's why I'm picking it as one I think could surprise a lot of people. So Tokyo Aliens, that's my second pick. Well, that is also a series that I've not read. I'm doing a bit of um, research as you talk, <clears throat> as you go through it. Um, the first thing that sticks out to me, just for like looking at the artwork, it gives very um, toilet-bound Hanako-kun in terms of just like the bold... Uh, outlines the character designs i feel like as well i'm going to mention this on my my top pick it ha it has the um appeal of 
let's say, very conventionally attractive characters that I think could appeal to um, more demographics than just their original intention as well. Which I think if you're trying to be like savvy in your approach to this, then yeah, that is a good pick. Um, not one that I would have thought of either. But you did kind of build up to what my pick was going to be. I think you already know what it is. Um, my top pick is Sakamoto Days. This is by uh, Yuto Suzuki. This is a weekly Shonen Jump title. Um, at the moment, it's 15 volumes. And frankly, well, I'm, as we speak at the moment, I, be- I believe there's been a leak, but there has been no official anime announcement yet, which to me is just shocking in of itself. If this continues, um, even to the point where when this comes out, then it it's going to end up being near the top of the list of longest waits for weekly Shonen Jump anime adaptation of all time, which is crazy considering that um, this is one of their most popular series at the moment. And I feel so confident in this series' ability to be the next big thing that my only rationale or reasoning behind it not getting it yet is that there is something in the works and that something is being invested in and time and effort has to be put into it in order to make sure it's not a rushed product. So that is, yeah, so that it doesn't live up to expectations. Maybe, maybe I'm like, um, maybe I'm like high on the copium for that, but that's what I'm telling myself because this really is going to be, I think, one of Weekly Shonen Jump's next pillars of the magazine. Jujutsu Kaisen and My Hero Academia, they're both going to end relatively soon which will goes first i don't i don't know i think they both will be this year but then you're basically looking at a series where you know typically there are three pillars in the magazine one piece will obviously always be one of them for as long as it exists i feel like we're going to get into an era where the three faces on those uh, magazine issues are going to be luffy from one piece and then you're going to see chinatsu from uh, blue box and then also you're going to see Sakamoto days up there. You're going to see Sakamoto. Um, I think those are the future of the the near future of the magazine, at least. And looking at sales, looking at performance, just Sakamoto days was uh, the second best performing in the weekly show and jump table of contents rankings in 2023, just beside uh, One Piece, not even far behind it, way ahead of everything else. It got the most first place rankings of any series and loads of color pages and promotions. And in terms of sales, I believe at the moment it's maybe like the fifth best selling in the magazine. Each volume is over 100K, which is nothing to scoff at. And I think the only series above it are, like I say, the veterans. One Piece, Jujutsu Kaisen, My Hero Academia, and then Blue Box, which is a similar range as Sakamoto Days. Um, but that does have an anime coming up, and it's very soon. So that is another one that I think will be popular. But but in terms of actually talking about this quality of the series itself, it is genuinely one of my favorites to read week to week of anything that I'm keeping up with ongoing. I have, like I said um, in the introduction, I read weekly Shonen Jump religiously, and I like to compare all the series that I have read in the past with what's coming out right now. And I genuinely think it is one of the best most enjoyable battle shonen that this that the magazine has put out um at least in its modern history now what i will say because I, ha- I have thought about this when this does come out i i suspect you might not like it as much as i love it and that mm. is because it is when people say this it's usually a negative but i do not mean it a negative in any way this series is style over substance the series is what it does well, like A plus, 100%, is it has incredible choreography, fun characters, and great action. That's not to say the story is bad. I think the story is very well told. But I think it perhaps doesn't have the depth that maybe someone like you, who I I think of someone who doesn't particularly like Battle Shonen just because they're Battle Shonen. So it might not appeal to you in that sense, but I think it has all the has all the potential to, I think, really resonate with anyone who's just really craving that action-heavy, 
like thrill rides throughout every chapter, every episode. All, all you, the main thought that you have in your head, which is what I have every week, is, God, that was so fucking cool. Like that was mm. such a good, that was such a good fight. Was the way it was panelled, the way it was presented, and then, admittedly, if a few days go by, I might be like, I've kind of, I've kind of forgot what happened, but. I don't want to use that against that. I just want to preface that that is an element to the series um, that I think might come up in discussions when it does uh, become popular because I'm very, I'm actually very, very convinced it will be. And I think similar to your pet with Tokyo Aliens, I think it also it has the chance to appeal to, multi, even though it is shonen, it can appeal to broader demographics. I think you have a lot of very conventionally attractive men doing very cool and fun things with each other that perhaps the young boys that this is um, primarily catered to don't read in the same way that, let's say, young girls um, <laughs> might also cater to, you know. And that's and that's not to like put people in boxes, but I think if you, like when you say doujinshi and anything like that, this is absolutely that sort of series that can do that. So yeah, Sakamoto yeah. Days. Com- comedy, okay. action, fun time. That's it. And I think people don't realize how good an indicator of popularity doujinshi are. Uh, they are they are for sure uh, a like for like. Uh, there are popular series that don't get a ton of doujins, but generally speaking, if you're the sort of series that can inspire a ton of doujins, you're going to be very popular commercially. Uh, there's almost no question about it. Like you, I'm absolutely mystified uh, that this series has not gotten an anime before now I, I don't really understand it in any way shape or form especially for a jump series a weekly jump series um and i'm convinced that the leaks are pretty convincing it's something is in the work something is cooking um and i'm a big fan of blue box too by the way so it would be wonderful to see that be the next big thing i think there are kind of a, a ceiling on that but i do think that's going to become more popular when it gets an anime I also want to quickly mention, because it's funny that you, you said uh, when I was talking about, when you were talking about Toko, Tokyo Aliens, you referenced Jibako Shonen Hanako-kun, uh, Toilet Bound Hanako-kun, which I love. Um, the top two series, Tokyo Aliens has moved up the rankings. It is now basically the number three G Fantasy series. And the top two series in the G Fantasy stable are Kuro Shitsuji and uh, Black Butler and uh, Toilet Bound Hanako Kun. So that should give you an idea of the sort of demographic grasp, uh, the sort of reach that Tokyo Aliens potentially has, because I think it very much is in that same vein. Um, uh, so, I, you know, it's a different kind of hit than you would get out of. I don't think you would ever see Black Butler or Hanako Kun in Weekly Shonen Jump. Uh, but they're still pretty darn massive hits in their own respect. Uh, Black Butler has a third full season plus a couple of movies, the third full season coming up. Um, Hanako Kun has its second season coming up, plus it had a, an adaptation of its spinoff comedy manga, which is also a you know a, a top ten performer when it releases new volumes in Oricon. So uh, yes, I think Tokyo Aliens going for that demographic. Um, that that demographic reach that those kind of series have. Um, uh, okay, so uh, I, I, there's a couple of other jump related things I we could talk about here because ultimately jump is at the epicenter of of popularity in Animanga. But I wanted to talk specifically about Ruri Dragon because as we record this, Ruri Dragon is just coming uh, just coming back into into sim into sin into uh syndication online only after a truly long togashi like hiatus um when many people thought it was never going to come back uh, and it really wasn't even around that long when it was around but it made a it made a huge impression on people when it was around for a very very short period of time so uh, let's do this in interview format just for fun i'm going to ask you a couple questions about rory dragon and you just give me your take on it because you read it and i didn't why did rory dragon become so successful in such a short period of time uh by the way uh masaoki shindo is the mangaka who i believe had uh health problems if i'm not mistaken was the reason for the hiatus but why do you think it became so successful in such a short period of time yeah, I mean, yeah, w- worth noting that Masaki Shindo, 
he's actually very young as well. I, I don't know how old he is right now, but I think he was like early 20s when he did start the publication of Ruri Dragon. As you say, it only got to... It, it got to six chapters before going on hiatus, um, which I don't think is a luxury that would be afforded to many series in Weekly Shonen Jump. Uh, so it was it was an indication from the jump that it was very... There was potential there. And, you know, they put out the first volume of just those six chapters, and I believe it sold over 200,000 copies. I think even since then, it's perhaps even doubled that just in um, the backlog, if you could even count one volume as a backlog, uh, <laughs> leading up to its resuming serialization. As for why it's popular, you know what? It's, it's not a favourite of mine and the magazine, so it doesn't resonate with me in the way that's clearly resonating with a lot of people. But I will say this, it's it's just very like comfortably comfortably and like confidently told you know it is a it is essentially a cute girls doing cute things series if you want to boil it down to that and i even looked back myself i i don't believe weekly shonen jump has ever uh published that sort of series before anything that like might qualify for that it's still primarily like a rom-com something you know it's it's an element of a series but not necessarily the focus this is like a true slice of life in in a sense that you just haven't that weekly show and jump typically doesn't even consider publishing so perhaps them reaching out to that um new type of story and mm-hmm. the way that i feel like in the past few years there have been a lot of new types of stories that have come out in weekly show and jump some to varying degrees of success, but all of them, I would say, to like an interesting or like a decent quality in how and the stories that they're trying to tell that feel fresh and unique, especially compared to um, what might have come before in the magazine. But Ray Dragon seems to be the one that has just absolutely skyrocketed. And it's funny because in of itself is not an unconventional series. It's a very conventional you know, this is a cute little dragon girl doing cute little dragon girl things in her high school environment, and there's not there's not much else to it. But I, yep. I do wonder if that is just in of itself enough for how popular it's become. It's interesting, yeah, it is. And uh, two hundred thousand copies for one six chapter volume is really astonishing. Um, so then my next question, will it reclaim, assuming, let's assume for the sake of argument that Chindo is able to keep publishing on a semi-regular pattern, do you think it will, will it regain its momentum? Will Will the magic rekindle? Yeah, I have no, I have no doubts that it's going to remain popular, especially like I say, if Jujutsu Kaisen and My Hero Academia are going to end soon, this basically will just overtake Blue Box and Sakamoto Days as the most popular or the second most popular uh, currently running series in the magazine. Wow. I should mention as well, it's, 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 it's kind of a strange scenario where, you know, when the news came back that is being published for five chapters in the print magazine before becoming a bi-weekly, essentially digital only title, it's a new format that they're playing with because Weekly Shonen Jump has done digital only series before, which I should clarify is different from jump plus jump plus is a different format entirely they do have their digital version of each issue that they publish and they have in the past few years done five or six um many series essentially one volume series that were only published on the digital version of weekly shonen jump now this is the first time that they're going to continue doing something ongoing that is not going to feature in the physical edition. So it won't be in the table of contents. We won't be able to measure it from that metric, but it will have its own unique publishing schedule, digital only, while also being published on Jump Plus. Similar to like how Oshinoko is weekly Young Jump, but it is also available on Jump Plus. It's still technically a weekly Shonen Jump title. It just has almost like an extra home where more people can read it so they are definitely like they're putting everything into it i think to make masoki shindo comfortable enough at the pace that he can do the series but also reach as big of an audience as they clearly know that this is going to reach because i don't the the actual announcement of this returning came from 
from Masaki Shindo's own Twitter account. And it, at the time that I looked at it, it had like 5 million, like 6 million views. And that's, that's, it's just crazy how many, how many people are already invested in this tiny little series that, you know, is another potential to be the next big thing. That's wild. Well, uh, just uh, briefly then to touch on jump series uh, and making a huge impact in a very short time. Would you agree that uh, Kagura Bachi has probably since Rory Dragon been the series that made the biggest splash in the shortest period of time? Yeah, this is this is an interesting one as well because I think we touched on uh, Kagurabachi when we spoke about uh, the first arc of uh, Hunter Hunter on that podcast episode. Even since then, Kagurabachi still it still only has one volume out, but they had reprints, and for the past month, the reprint of the first volume is at this point outpacing other series like Witch Watch and um, anything at that level. Witch Watch, Elusive Samurai. Um, I think it's almost like Akane Banashi levels. And this is considering this is the second month that it wasn't intended to be published. I think in the end, it's first month, it got just under 30k. But that seems to purely be down to limits of what was printed and perhaps the expectations that Weekly Sun Jump had for their Japanese audience were a bit lower since they clearly already knew this was a big thing in the West. Um it also recently just got an extremely fast announcement for print um, official translation by Viz, one of the fastest of all time. So, yeah, this is another one that has potential to be up there. Obviously, a very different series, but when there was a time that this is this was kind of up in the air if it was going to survive or not. At the time of us speaking on it, I feel pretty confident that you know Weekly Shonen Jump might be on a little bit of a roll on finding things that they need to fill the gaps that are going to appear in the magazine soon. Yeah, I mean, the last numbers I saw in it were like 39,000, which is, uh, again, considering that they probably, it's just, that was capped by their own limitations on on what they had available to sell. Uh, Yeah, I think you and I are both of the opinion that of that that infant generation, we actually both like Mama Yu Yu better um than Kagurabachi, but um Mama Yu Yu has been not nearly as well received commercially. So um we're hoping that one survives, whereas I think with Kagurabachi the question is gonna be just how big is this thing gonna get? Um so uh anyway that's our next big thing conversation. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh again just to summarize I picked uh Kindergarten Wars and Tokyo Aliens uh samu picked uh sakamoto days and what was the other show you picked i've already forgotten what was the other one um it was gachiakata oh that's a gachiakata yeah so shown in titles of course but um it'll be interesting to see so we'll maybe we'll do a, a touch base on this at some point uh gachiakata not even a hint of a rumor of an anime on that one yet but it, it'll get one eventually the other three uh, Tokyo Aliens and uh, Yochin Wars has definitely had uh, uh, domain name registration. Sakamoto Days has very, very deep rumors. Tokyo Aliens, I think, also had a domain registration. So uh, they're all at the point where I think in two years from now, at the very most, they'll all have anime and we'll be able to really look and see how 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 close we came on our predictions. Uh, so that's it. Uh, thank you very, uh, thank you very much, Samu, for uh, for your uh, insightful contributions as always. Thank you everyone for listening, and uh, we look forward to uh, joining you for our next manga conversation. Uh, until then, uh, stay frosty. See you next time.